Okay, this is for computer geeks only. I'm just gonna turn these items around. As you can see, this fits in my hand. It says, assembled in Mexico. This is the great kids controller. Despite it being large, it kind of fits real nice. It feels, has a nice feel to it. It says made in USA. Okay, this is called the video touchpad. I think this came standard with Star Raiders. So if you bought Star Raiders, I think they would give you either one or two pads, I'm not sure. Made in Taiwan. Okay, here's the, the six player, the, oops, excuse me, the six cartridge changer here. Okay, look at this. I don't think it was licensed by Atari though. Here's the trademark here. Here it is, sorry. Model number RGA-1360. This is RGA International Limited made in Hong Kong. So who is RGA? Well, I learned surprisingly that um, CBS Electronics, they had CBS ColecoVision in, in, in Europe, that, that is the same CBS who owns the broadcasting. I always thought, oh, that must be a different CBS. But uh, it was, so I always like to know who owned this stuff, who was interested in games and you know, getting into the industry. So there that is. Here's another unit. Sorry about that, right there. Okay, so here's the big logo. Damn it, right there. Hey, there's their big trademark. Doesn't have any words on it. Okay, very odd. Okay, there's, there's the list of cartridges came in their own cases. Like I said, I'm not gonna really spend a lot of time with this because, but just to show you. Okay, pretty cool. Okay, here's the IntelliVoice from Mattel Electronics. So obviously Mattel made toys and they became a major player in the video game industry as well. There's where obviously you put cartridges in. This hooks up to your Intellivision right here. And then you can still put cartridges through there. To the best of my knowledge, it only worked, the, the voice uh, feature only worked with a few games. And sometimes it wasn't even voice, it was different sound effects, to the best of my knowledge. You can check me on this, here we are. Okay, this is called the Model 3330. The Model 3330, so. Interestingly, it says that this is from Hawthorne, California. Interesting, because it shows that California was a major player back then. Here we are, Mattel, 1981. Okay. Here we have this very tiny printer. I think I've already shown you a size comparison. There's the Atari keyboards. Okay, see, excuse me, that's, that's sorry, the kids controller. Now, I always mistakenly thought that uh, these were the keyboard controller. This is the bit, this is called the video touchpad. Okay, this is the keyboard controller. Okay, and here's how it looks next to a Super Nintendo second model. 
bigger than the printer. Okay, this is called the Atari 1020. Here's the modem. Here's the CX-85 keypad. Okay, sign our. Okay, tell me if uh, you can guess what this is. Right here. Here's a, uh, this is a size comparison between this and a Super Nintendo, the uh, smaller uh, Model 2. As you can see, obviously this is smaller, but believe it or not, this is a printer. And back in this day, back in the early 1980s, this is what printers looked like. They, they had. They were selling a lot of printers with the, the small paper. And it's, it's kind of funny to think about that today, that uh, you could even use this. I mean... But this is called the Atari 1020. Okay. This is it from the side view and the back view. Now, believe it or not, the old Atari computers came with, I mean, they didn't, excuse me, they come with, but there was a, an optional accessory right there. There's the pen. I'm just trying to show you that Atari has been accused of being slackers, but um, that's not necessarily true. They, they seem to make a lot, a lot of attempts. It's just that a lot of those attempts fail. In fact, to the best of my knowledge, in 1982 or 1983, they were going to release a 10-bit video game system, but it was so difficult to program for that they scrapped it. So this video is showing you that Atari uh, did try. Okay, here's uh, the light pen. You can see the connector. There's a printer. There's a numeric pad. Uh, as you can see here, the numeric pad um, the numeric pad, you know, uh, attached to your Atari home computer. Here is the Atari 1030. This is a modem. Okay, so shows you that uh, uh, communicating between computers from great distances did exist back then. Atari, a Warner Communications company, which means that it couldn't have been any later than the early 1980s. So, back in the early 1980s, although probably nobody did it, you could communicate from one computer to another over distances. Okay, so, 
Atari was trying. Here's how that looks next to a, a Nintendo Model 2. Also, uh, on the Atari 2600, there, were, there was this video game called Star Raiders. I, I now remember the name. Everybody talked about it. It was this weird game where you put it in and it was a lot of stars. And it didn't seem to run on a normal uh, joystick because it required these special controllers. So, once again, the Atari 2600 had bigger hopes than, uh, than just simple Pong games. They, they were going to try to, you know, it, uh, broaden their horizons. Here is another example of a, an Atari odd-looking odd controller. The keyboard controller. Very neat looking, right? And, and of course, this is the most rare, if I can get a good shot. This is the kids controller. Now, at the same time, Intellivision came out with Intellivoice, the voice synthesis module. In other words, they were attempting to uh, be uh, talking heads of their day. So, once again, it shows you that these game, game, that these game systems did not think small. The technology was, was very limited at the time, but uh, they all had big hopes. In fact, if, if you look at Atari and Intellivision, and if you look at what the systems were capable of, like maybe 128 bits of RAM power, practically nothing, and what they delivered, they delivered, Atari delivered hundreds of games, and, and they were many were very, very different from each other. Here's an interesting add-on to the Atari 2600. Oh, shit. Right there. Put it into your Atari, and you could play, and you could put, line up six cartridges, and choose which one you could play. So, uh, once again, that, that was a pretty cool add-on. Um, now, as far as showing uh, Atari uh, home computers, back to Atari home computers, um, now look at this, okay? It's amazing that Atari was thinking this way. I mean, you got this, this beautiful case here. Look at this, Atari Lab. Atari Kravis and then the old basin. So once again, it showed you that Atari was thinking. And these, these beautiful containers could be used for regular games as well. That's for another video. They also had these types of cases that could hold games. And then this was another model for the 2600. This held a lot of stuff. But once again, that's, I'm going to save that for another, I'm saving that all for another video. I'm not going to do it here. I'm just showing you, you know, once again, I'm not even going to bother uh, going into detail with that. I'm just showing you that uh, Atari was thinking. So you had all these. Okay, now here's a box to the Atari Bookkeeper kit. Okay. I should have kept it in its original location. Okay, here's the Atari Bookkeeper kit. You can see that from the size of it, they were trying to uh, use the Bill Gates method, kind of, you know, by by making this look like this humongous uh, super software. So, you know, they put it in a huge box. That was a marketing, marketing strategy, strategy, of course. I'm tripping over myself. This is how it looks next to a PS1. Obviously, this is a huge box here. Um, okay, it says contains the bookkeeper diskette program. Miracle keypad. Computer equipment not included.
the Atari Bookkeeper. Okay. So, obviously they had, uh, they were thinking. And now we do have a date on this box, okay. Atari Incorporated 1982. I'm trying to uh, show this to you. The home manager kit. Zoom in on this. Stock analysis. Also, in a, in a later video, I will show you that Atari made a lot of learning programs. Uh, few people recognize them because few people bought them. Most people bought the games, but uh, Atari was trying to do other things. Okay. Here's a, here's a box for the Atari programmer. This is the back. Okay, I'm running out of space, so uh, sayonara.